This is St. Denis National Wildlife Area in Saskatchewan. This is a field site located in the middle of the Canadian prairies in the Saskatchewan River Basin, just 40 kilometers east of Saskatoon. Hi, I'm Andrew Ison from the Global Institute for Water Security. Water is of critical importance to the Canadian prairies, in particular for agricultural activities. And in the past decade alone, we've had severe flooding and severe droughts, which uh, show us how vulnerable we are here. St. Denis is located in what's called a non-contributing area of the Saskatchewan River Basin, which means that the snow melt and rainfall that lands in this area never reaches a river network such as the Saskatchewan River Basin. This is a really great site to work at. It was established in the 1960s as a national wildlife area, and we have great legacy data sets uh, going back over decades, as well as the new data that we're collecting with the instrumentation that we've installed in the last couple of years. We've been monitoring the storage in the ponds and the flow in between the ponds, as well as what's happening under the ground in groundwater and the soil moisture. In St. Denis, we have an ephemeral stream channel running through the site, um, which runs through a sequence of ponds. And we try to measure the, the inflow at the top here and the outflow uh, just above the terminal pond. And then when we take the difference between those flows, we can work out how much water has actually contributed to that stream flow from the site itself. So as you can see, in August, this is a completely dry channel. There's no water at all. Just after melt, the, this is really flowing hard and the water level is almost coming up right to the top. So we have uh, measurements of soil moisture with uh, various dielectric instruments. We have uh, major potential measurements with heat dissipation probes and with tensiometers. And we have piezometers which measure the groundwater levels. We also have pressure transducers in the lakes, rain gauges, we have flux towers, and we have a raft that's measuring evaporation and energy balance at the pond. You can put all of this together and you can start to sort of close water balances, identify problems with closing water balances, uh, and you can start to quantify processes um, more rigorously. So this is a really quite a comprehensive monitoring scheme that we have here. And we also have it hooked up to a telemetry system so that the data is sent straight back to our computers in Saskatoon. Um, we can keep an eye on it continuously and archive it without having to visit the site to do that. Think it rained last night? Maybe a bit. My research is concerned with uh, stream flow generation and flooding on the prairies, so how water basically moves from the landscape to streams. Um, intrinsic, I think, in the question of water security is uh, the risk associated with either too much or not enough water. So to, to really predict and mitigate uh, those risks, we need to fully understand uh, the controls on, on stream flow generation. This uh, research is part of two of the GRWS research themes, theme A and theme B. That's land use change and land management impacts on hydrology uh, or on water security and climate change impacts on um, water security. In particular, at this site, we have uh, a managed landscape where we're using different crops in different years and we're also transitioning the land from cropland to grassland. So over a long period of time, um, our monitoring can help to understand the impacts of that on hydrology. We also have a long record of measurements going back uh, four decades or five decades now, um, which lets, lets us look at climate variability, which is very, very si significant. It's very difficult to interpret uh, climate change when you have this underlying variability always happening. So this is a really good site to try and untangle that kind of problem. <laughs>